today's the day. Newsflash. We are picking up our van at last. Finally, after all this waiting, the day has arrived. We are so excited. Yeah. And yet, the same way, it doesn't feel really, doesn't feel real, does it really? In some ways. A bit surreal. A bit surreal, yeah. yeah. After all of the delays and postponements and lockdown. Absolutely. In one kilometre, the motorway is on the left. And that's the one we're going on. That's the one we're going on. <laughs> about 700 metres to your destination. Our destination is our van. Yay! Here we go. Leaving our lone van behind. about it. Here it is. Kilmore to get it set up. Yep. Okay. yep. Hit the road again. Absolutely. So we're in a queue coming back to Kilmore from Melbourne and we're going to have to go through a COVID-19 checkpoint to make sure that any cars that are heading out of Melbourne are allowed to do so. Got to the checkpoint and got waved straight through. Headed back to Kilmore we we'll spend the next couple of days setting the van up, ready for our life on the road. We said goodbye to Kilmore and headed off for our maiden voyage in the new van. Our first destination was Yak and Nanda, high country or the foothills of the high country. Looking forward to giving the van a bit of a shakedown and seeing how it performed. Our first stop was Beechworth where we stopped for lunch. Some great cafes in Beechworth. Paul found an amazing parking spot. Not too easy to do actually with such a big van and car. And of course no trip here would be complete without a trip to the Beechworth Bakery. But we had lunch in Beechworth. Mind you, there wasn't a lot available for someone like me who's gluten and dairy free. However, regardless, we had lunch and then we head off to Yak and Danda, which will be our home for the next week. Yak and Danda, known locally as Yak, is a former gold mining town in the northeast of Victoria. It's just between Beechworth and Modonga. Now it's a small tourist town and a very pretty one at that. Here we are, we've arrived at the Yakadanda Holiday Park where we will be staying for the next week. The park is actually really close to town, it's very walkable. A short stroll to the centre of town. It's an idyllic setting with a couple of creeks actually, just bordering the park with just running crystal clear water. Beautiful. We're able to get hold of a fire pit and some wood from the caravan park. So ready for an open fire tonight by the stream. Got lamb roast cooking in the weather. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's check in on our roast and see how it's going, shall we? Oh, look at that. Mmm, mmm. That is looking good. Won't be long now. That, Whoa, that looks amazing. Juicy, cooked. Oh, yum, garlic. Yum, 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 yum. Yakadana is considered to be one of Australia's prettiest villages, with its entire centre classified by the National Trust including its gutters. So I thought we'd check out the local tourist information centre. 
to what there is to do around here in Yekandanda. It's a historic town. Closed. So we decided to take matters into our own hands and visit the Yak Station Hub, a space that's been created as a tourist destination. It's on the site of the old Yakadanda Railway Station, which is no longer operational and has been turned into a museum and an art centre. One of the things we want to do on the our journey is to support the local communities we visit. And what better way to do that than by visiting one of the local pubs? So we ended up at the Star Hotel in Yakandanda. I sat down and enjoyed a palmer and enjoyed a steak. And Paul made friends. This time it was magpies. He had the meeting out of his hand by the end. We headed off to Woolshed Falls, which was on the way back towards Beechworth. Beautiful area. Got some great shots of some of the waterfall and um, enjoyed a bit of a walk around the place. It was a fairly easy walk in to the lookout and we saw prams doing it. But if you're going to go do, down to the waterfall itself, you will need to do some rock hopping. We'd had a fair bit of rain the day before. This really made the waterfall um, look even more spectacular with the extra water flowing over the rocks and down to the valleys below. Our time at Yakandana came to an end. Thank you to our hosts, Janine and Gavin. We really enjoyed your park. We hit the road again and we're on our way to Myrtleford, still in the high country. Here we are at Myrtleford. We stayed at the Myrtleford Holiday Park, a two minute walk from the centre of town. Myrtleford is a thriving agricultural town located in the Ovens River Valley below the Mount Buffalo Range. Managed to get our multicultural food fix. The town of Myrtleford is surrounded by mountains. Beautiful backdrop for all activities in the area. Once again, we head off to support the local community. Wenda has her steak and Paul has his palmer. Paul is naughty, he has his mask off. Look what that is. <laughs> I'm putting that in. <laughs> Beautiful day up here in Myrtleford. Sun's out, not a breath of wind. Got a bit of time up the sleeve, and Wenders found us a walk to go on. Yep. It's called the Ovens River Walk. And we're assuming it runs along the Ovens River. Well, let's find out, shall let's we? Let's go take a look. <laughs> Tobacco farming used to be the dominant industry in Myrtleford. You can still see the remnants of the industry in these tobacco drying kilns. Here we are at the beginning of the Ovens River Loop Walk in Myrtleford. It goes for 5.6 kilometres and it's considered a Grade 1 walk. Sealed all the way around, so really anybody can really manage this walk. I think prams would be okay too. We even saw people on push bikes using it as a bike track. Had to dodge out of the way a couple of times. And as I suspected, the run beside the Ovens River. The walk crosses the river a couple of times. The walk is also part of the mosaic trail, and the trail is now a treasure trove of hidden art. Some that's easy to find, and others you have to look a little harder. A beautiful walk with the music of the Australian bush in the background. Have a look at this shy little fella. An echidna wandering around in the bush.
fun on the suspension bridge. Ooh, a water crossing, where's the car? The last part of the Ovens River Walk uh, took us back through town, back to the caravan park. We stopped to have a look at the Phoenix tree sculpture, which was carved out of the trunk and roots of a huge river red gum. One of the things to do in Myrtleford is to do one of the walking tracks around the Reform Hill. Paul and I chose the Reform Hill Lookout. It was the longest. It was a decision we might just regret. As you'll see, it's a beautiful walk with great views, but it looked a lot flatter on the map. This walk is considered a grade three walk, suitable for most ages and fitness levels. What's that say about us? Mm. Are we there yet? We made it. Just. Town of Myrtleford, we can see in the distance there. I don't know if you can see it, but camouflaged in those trees was a small mob of kangaroos. One of the main features of this walk is the remnants of the gold mines dotted around the place. You can learn about this history by the plaques that are scattered around the walk. On the way down, when I finally caught my breath, I started to notice the amazing wildflowers and the bird song. Well, that concludes our time in the high country. Farewell, Myrtleford, and thank you, Kathy, for hosting us at the caravan park. We've really enjoyed our stay. We're heading off now up towards the Murray River region. Gunbower a little agricultural town in northern Victoria. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you there. I'll see you there. Bye for now. See ya.